Jim Dalton uh, from TransNexus, and we sell lease cost routing and billing solutions, uh, primarily focused for uh, voice over IP carriers for interconnection and peering. And so what, what I'll give is just a, a brief overview of really kind of the strategies or business models we see developing in terms of voice over IP peering. I think the market's trying different models, has yet to figure out what really works, and so I'll go through what we've seen and what we see developing. And these are really the four models or strategies I want to go through and just describe in a little bit more detail. The inter-exchange carrier model, the voice over IP peering, is probably the most common we see today. It's really uh, voice over IP carriers. They run a session border controller, and they interconnect a lot of voice over IP peers. So here you see the service peering provider in the middle. They've got a number of other networks, peering networks, that they interconnect with voice over IP networks. And uh, some of the benefits of this model is it's simple. If you want to get access to a large number of voice over IP termination routes, you can interconnect with one voice over IP a peering service provider, and they give you voice over IP access to a lot of different networks. So it's very convenient and uh, saves you a lot of time. There's a lot of value added. You don't have to worry about transcoding, and really you have one bill in terms of settlement. You pay your peering service provider, and they pay all the other terminating peers that terminate your calls for you. So there's a lot of benefit in that model, and really that's the classical inter-exchange carrier model where a class four tandem switch has been replaced by a, a session border controller. One of the limitations are it's certainly you pay higher prices. They're, they're providing a lot of service there in terms of what they're uh, providing each peer, uh, testing between the peers, transcoding, interconnection. So they're providing definitely a lot of benefit, but you pay higher prices than you would if you peered directly. And also the uh, session border controller can be a bottleneck that can limit services that you might be able to have uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis that are not supported by individual session border controllers. Uh, the next model is the uh, really the simple federation model in registry where you've got a group of carriers or group of peers that agree to exchange traffic with one another and they share all their routes in a common uh, enum directory. And one of the benefits is you have a single route lookup that provides you access to many networks, just like the previous model, but there's no signaling bottleneck in the middle uh, between all the peers. Uh, and you get the benefit of peer-to-peer -peer transmission, which can be better quality of service, and also assures you that any application between two peers is not going to be disrupted by a session border controller that may not uh, support all the features of different applications. Uh, one of the limitations is now you have to have a lot of bilateral billing contracts. You need to have a billing relationship with every one of those peers, so you lose the benefit of one bill. Now you've got to have interconnect relations with a lot of different peers and be able to have security and access control for each one of those peers as well as the billing relationship. And it really doesn't scale uh, very well if you're trying to collect termination fees from each other peer you interconnect with. So that's really uh, improved upon really what I'm calling in the advanced uh, federation registry. Same sort of network, there should be an enum server there, but in addition to it, you add a multilateral clearinghouse. And really this is kind of the model we have in the SS7 network today where you've got these independent clearinghouses that collect call detail records from all the different carriers and sort through all the call detail records and figure out who owes who. So everybody's compensated. So the benefits of this is the same in the previous uh, network, you've got the single uh, enum server that provides a single point for routing, you've got peer-to-peer -peer transmission, and you've got this multilateral clearing and settlement. And a couple of benefits here from multilateral clearing and settlement. First of all, you've got the efficiencies if you've got a single clearinghouse that, that does, that figures out the uh, billing and settlement for every carrier. But one unique advantage that a multilateral clearinghouse has, when you have a bilateral relationship every month when you go to do settlement, you know, it's my CDRs versus your CDRs, and you go to the next carrier, it's my CDRs versus your CDRs. They never match. You always have a billing and settlement dispute. When you go to a multilateral clearinghouse, they see everybody's CDRs. If there's one guy whose switch is always short, or there's something about it, funny about his payments, he sees that with every other peer, and you can highlight quickly identify bad behavior, a multilateral clearinghouse can see that because they have access to all the information as opposed to bilateral agreements where it's just a one-to-one -one relationship and it's always really your CDR is your word versus my word. So that's a big efficiency in this model that uh, clearing and settlement brings in a multilateral sense. And the limitation here is, well, you have security and access control. You still have the case where you have to be able to control calls from each uh, other peer and the access issues with that. And the last model I want to go through, which I think is, is really interesting, it's, it's developing. This is about the GSM Association, which is the worldwide association of all the wireless GSM operators. Uh, on their website, they list 700 operators. I've heard, actually, it's over 900 now. But a huge group of carriers represent over 2 billion subscribers worldwide. 
And what they're developing is really an extension of a network they've had for some time. They call the GRX, and that is really a TDM network where they manage roaming traffic among each other. They're enhancing that with what they're going to call their IPX, or their Internet Protocol Exchange Network. And this is a very simple diagram. How it would work is basically you've got these IPX proxies, these IP routers that they're all going to interconnect with on a private network for exchanging traffic between uh, GSM operators. So a very, uh, very well organized, very controlled private network for exchanging traffic between carriers. And this is really kind of the, the model of the benefits of how they describe their service here. And, uh, you know, you look at the benefits of it, it really does everything. I mean, what is there not to like about this model? I mean, you've got security on the outer layer, you've got cascading payments. Every transit carrier in a call end to end gets compensation for their leg of the call. But really, I guess the limitation is, is that possible? So, you know, who knows? It's kind of everything you could ever imagine. It's been in trials for a year. Uh, it seems to be well thought out, a good plan. The GSM Association is huge and powerful and well organized. They may pull it off. So just to quick through kind of the experiences to date in terms of peering, I guess peering, the initial idea was public enum. Everybody would put their SIP address into a public enum server, and that way any two IP phones could find each other through a, a public enum server. That idea doesn't look like it's going to take off. That's really didn't fly, the original voice over IP peering idea. But there's some other business models that have evolved. And one is really the inter-exchange carrier model. And I guess these are kind of the, uh, the leading service providers in this field. And while they're peering service providers, they're really still just inter-exchange carriers. And I think that's they add a lot of value, but they're in the middle of the signaling path. Quite often, they're in the middle of the RTP path. They're really just a a voice over IP uh, inter-exchange carrier, and that may not be the peering model that works for everybody. Uh, there are a couple of companies, Newstar and Verisign in particular, that are really trying to develop peering solutions for federations. They're not going to be so much the carrier. They're going to be that operator that handles the routing for everybody, organizes and provisions the routing for all the peers, collects the call detail records, and does the settlement. Uh, but the uptake on that has still been pretty slow. I'm not sure that's a bad model. It just has not really been widely adopted yet. But those are the two companies really leading in that area. And so I guess the bottom line here is the market is still really searching for the right voice over IP peering model. And I think the trends to look for here is first uh, industry cooperatives. And when you talk about voice over IP peering, there's a lot of cooperation that has to go on. Certainly the technical co cooperation, we start there, that's the most obvious. But the business model cooperation and the revenue exchange, the revenue settlements is an important part of that. And we talked a little bit about the GSM Association. I mean, that's a huge network of carriers, but you got the CDM carriers as well, how they'll organize. They always, they're very similar in terms of the GS, GSM uh, operators, and they'll probably have a similar model they develop. And, well, the VPF here, here's kind of a, uh, a cooperative carriers that, you know, perhaps could get together and, and do more than the ENUM registry and kind of define their own mechanisms for how you're going to appear and settle. And it requires some kind of neutral cooperation to kind of make it all happen and pull it together. So perhaps industry cooperatives could be a, a way that drives voice over IP peering in a larger, more scalable way that uh, works for carriers. Uh, regulation. I mean, we've the biggest voice peering network in the world, if you're looking at a single network, is really the US SS7 network. I mean, any SS7 carrier, any carrier in the US a local exchange routing guide can make a telephone call to every other carrier. The call always gets completed. There's always settlements. And it's really been driven by regulation that puts it together. You know, will the regulator step forward and make that happen? Kind of hard to imagine because voice over IP is so big and so complex. But there is a really kind of the first initiative I'm aware of is in the UK. They're starting to specify how you should interconnect with the public voice over IP network, or BT. And that helps a lot. If you've got a simple way, or a single way, rather, specified for how to interconnect, that eliminates a lot of the uh, interoperability issues. Consolidation, I guess that's how really it began in the US in the telephone network. You had AT&T uh, pulled everything together. It seems unlikely that'll happen in the uh, telecom world today. It could be. And then last, I think you can't rule out really independent alternatives. There's some big factors out there. You know, open source software, for example, could be a factor that might enable these things. And there are big non-telecom players that could be a factor as well that could change things.